Welcome to Daedalus University. I'm Paul Griffin coming to you from Brooklyn. Today we're going to take a look at combinatorics. So get out good old trusty Richard G. Brown's Advanced Mathematics and let's get started. The idea today is to take a look at a principle and then see if we can apply that principle in a question later on in the chapter in the mixed review. Uh, the idea here is to first go over the principle so we understand the fundamentals but then see if we can be flexible with our knowledge in applying it to frankly a more difficult question the kind of question that you might see on your exam so as you see I've got the inclusion exclusion principle up on the big board you can read along on page 566 for any sets a and b the number of elements in the union of a and b equals the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the number of elements in the intersection between A and B. So it's the minus the number of elements in the intersection between A and B, which is interesting. Why? Well, the reason is when you add up all the elements in A and all the elements in B, you have added the number of elements in the intersection twice. So I'm going to say that again. If you have a Venn diagram, two circles overlapping, and you add up all the elements included in A with all the elements included in B, well the fact is you've added that little sliver that they share in the middle twice. Hence the inclusion-exclusion principle and this formula. So that's the basic fundamental idea. Let's see if we can apply it to a more difficult question. So turn ahead here, we're going to look at page 588, number 9. This is in the Mixed Combinatorics Exercises. I'll read this question. You see I have a sort of shorthand form of the question up on the big board. All students at John Jay High School must take at least one of the school's three science courses, biology, chemistry, and physics. In order to produce Project the future enrollment in these three courses. The principal sent questionnaires to 297 junior high school students and got these results. 132 intend to take biology and chemistry. 107 intend to take chemistry and physics. 88 intend to take biology and physics. 43 intend to take only biology. 55 intend to take only chemistry. And 38 intend to take only physics. And the question is, how many students intend to take all three science courses? Hmm. Let's get started. Let's start with those three numbers in the bottom of the list. That's an easier place for us to start. It says 43 are going to take only bio. Well, only bio goes in this quadrant here, right? Notice in a Venn diagram, even a complex like one like this, you only have, you have three interlapping circles, but ultimately you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quadrants. And of course the universal tells us what the sum is. So we have that 43 for only bio, which we put there. For only chemistry, we have 55. We'll put that here. And for only physics, we have 38. So we'll put that here. But now we have 132 take bio and chem. Well, that's, you know, that's this intersection here. So we can't really write that in any quadrant because we don't know how to break it up yet, right? And then so forth, we have 107 over here in chem and physics, and we have 88 in bio and physics. So kind of tricky. Now I'm going to show you how to solve this using more or less simple algebra. We're going to write a few equations that are true, do uh, some uh, simple operations and we'll figure out what's there in the center which we'll go ahead and call A. We want to know how many students took or plan to take all three. Now let's go around and name the rest of these. We'll call this one B, we'll call this one C, and we'll call this one D. Notice A, B, C, and D are a little complicated. So look at B. B is the students taking bio and physics but not chemistry, right? So after I show you this sort of algebraic solution, we'll go back and look at how it applies directly to the inclusion-exclusion principle. Well, let's not forget that the survey went out to 297 students. 
and that they all need to be accounted for here in these seven quadrants because everybody has to take at least one science as the question dictates. Well, what we can do with these top three numbers, namely the 132, the 107, and the 88, is we can write some pretty simple formulas, right? <clears throat> we could say, for example, A, that's in the center, plus that C, well, that equals the 132, right? 132 are all the students taking bio and chem. So the two of those quadrants account for that. And similarly, we can say, let's go around the horn here and say A plus D will go clockwise. Those are all the students taking chem and physics, so that's 107. And lastly, A plus B are all the students taking physics and bio. And that comes to 88. Those are the given numbers. Now you'll remember from algebra that you can add equations. If we add all these equations together, get out of there. Right? What we get is we get three A's, right? Three A plus B plus C plus D, and our equal sign is shifted right word here, equals I've added those three numbers up on my calculator and we get 327. Alright? Not bad, right? So we know something, we know something's true here, that's good. Now, what else do we know? We know that the total, the total students surveyed was 297, right? And if we subtract the students who are taking only bio, that's 43, and only chemistry, that's 55, and only physics, 38, well, what does this give us? Well, first it gives us a number. It gives us 161. But let's think about it for a minute. What is that number 161? Well, that's actually the sum of all these numbers in the middle, right? If, if, if we take the total 297 up here, subtract the only numbers, well, as I said, the 297 needs to account for all seven of these quadrants. So if we subtract those three, we get A plus B plus C plus D. We get the four mystery quadrants back, and that has to equal 161. So at this point, we can just line that equation up, up underneath this one, so A plus B, and I'll line our variables up, plus D equals 161. And now we're going to subtract these two equations. I'll put in parentheses here so we see that you know the subtraction is distributed throughout. And lo and behold, look, we just have 2A, B, C, and D go away. We end up with 2A equals 166. So that's it. We've solved the question. A is 83. And that is, in fact, the solution. Now you could check it. You could plug 83 in here. Remember, we knew that, <laughs> that's 83. We knew that A and, A and C was 132. So you do 132 minus the 83. And we get 49, we're in C. And you do the 107 minus the 83, and we figure out that D was 24. So that's the students taking chemistry and physics, but not bio. And B, when we do 88 minus our 83, we just have five students who will take just bio and just physics. So there you have it. There's a solution using algebra and using our knowledge of Venn diagrams. But I did want to end with sort of taking a look at <clears throat> how the inclusion-exclusion principle is at play here. Well, think about it. The union of all three circles, bio, chem, and physics, ends up being the sum of all those numbers given. So we remember all these numbers given over here. Right, if we added all of these up, we would get the sum, right, and I'll do it over here. If we added 132, 107, 88. Now those are the intersections and you know it would take a little bit longer to explain why those are going to give us 
the the sum of all of the individual sets added up that comes out to 463 and let me explain what that number is that number 463 equals all the sets in I'll call it bio all of the elements that is all of the elements in I'll call it chemistry plus all of the elements in physics that's what that 463 is and yet the inclusion exclusion principle tells us that we then have to subtract the intersection of these sets right so we have to subtract the students who are taking all three courses and because we're dealing with three circles we have to subtract that number twice so this is again how the test always sort of makes things a little bit more complicated notice in the principle given on 566 we just have add up all in A all in B subtract the intersection and you got your union so ultimately what this inclusion exclusion principle tells us is that for our given question if we want to know the actual union whoop, I forgot I called them B, C, and P, we're not in A land here. If we want to know the union of all the students in bio, in chem, and in physics, what we do is we apply this principle, which is uh, articulated in the formula above here. Those first, the elements in, in bio, chem, and physics, we got by adding up all the numbers given in our question. And then lo and behold, after our algebra, we discovered that in the center was 83. We're going to multiply that by 2 because we've counted it twice too many times. Like, if you really add up everything in B, right, everything in this circle, and everything in C, I mean, notice, we're going to count that center, and then everything in the physics circle, we are in fact going to count that center not once which is what we want to do we're going to count it three times right so if we subtract it twice well then guess what we get we get 297 which of course is the number that we want that is the total students in other words the union of all the students taking biochem and physics that's it for now. I hope this clarifies how one might apply the inclusion-exclusion principle or just how one might go about solving a Venn diagram question by generating some simple algebraic formulas. All right. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the future.